The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch UK Radio or its affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Listening to Paranormal Concept right here on Parasearch UK Radio with your host, Paul Brook. Good evening and welcome to the Paranormal Concept Show. Now, I understand you're waiting to hear the dulcet tones of my colleague, Paul Rook, but he's decided to have a little holiday this week. So I've taken the helm and I've dragged into the studio with me. A couple of lovely lads. One of them is Carl Hutchinson and the other is Ashley Nib. Good evening, boys. Hiya. Good evening, Kerry. And good evening, Ashley. <laughs> now, tonight good evening, we're Carl. Going to, we, now we're going to be talking about EVPs um, tonight. So I've brought the two lads on because I don't really know an awful lot about this. This is a tech topic and I'm not very good with tech, as we have all, we've all come to understand. <laughs> now, first of all, Let's define what we're talking about when we talk about EVP, which is Electronic Voice Phenomena. Carl? Um, Well, it's sort of a a subject which sort of engrosses quite a lot of elements, really, because when you say EVP, Electronic Voice Phenomena, you're not just talking about on a digital recorder, you're, not, you, 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 you're talking video, you're talking all the various different elements that can record sound and you hear something back that you think wasn't there at the time. So whether you're old school and it's real to real, or whether you are using um, a Tascam or a Zoom or even whether you're using an Olympus or a Sony, it all depends on the equipment you're using in my eyes that can look at EVPs or electron voice phenomena. See, I always thought when we talked about EVPs, it was just what you sort of like got on the voice bo- like voice recorder. No, 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 because you, you, you can get them on video as well. You, you, if you're recording something that has sound, technically that sound can be picking up on something that you didn't hear at the time that the sound recorder picks up on. So it's the same principle in theory. So when we're out investigating and we've got all of our lovely little bits of tech, anything that you can record on, sound on, could possibly have an EVP? Yeah. So how do you discern then what is an EVP and what isn't? So where do you get to the point where you go, I can definitely discount members of my team and... (sighs) see that as a voice that wasn't there on the evening how do how do we discern that um in my eyes there's 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 two there's two main areas to that that question is one is are you doing an evp in the correct manner and this isn't me saying i'm an expert whatever i'm just saying you have to bring in principles that will cut out every possible explanation so in a controlled environment um, it also means that you need to know what level your rec- or your recorder, whether it's uh, real to real, whether it's uh, handheld, whether it's a video camera, records on, because they all have different types of recording levels. Um, but I think the main key, going back to the first point I said, is you've got to be able to rule out every other possible explanation that somebody's not whispering because what I feel that you get quite a lot of this in in investigations where you're doing an EVP session and you say to some people, right, we're going to do an EVP session. Let's not 
jingle your coins in your pockets. Let's not stand there. Let's not have a coin, a coat that makes a rustling sound, blah de blah de blah. And as soon as you set that recorder off, you're asking questions, and somebody might have just shifted their feet, where they make a, a noise that is picked up on the recorder that could be interpreted. Uh, it wants you to rec- re- review it, and you're, you're thinking, well, nobody was talking there, and I have this noise that's been picked up, but I'm not 100% sure what it is. So it's 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 the going into an investigation and going into recording EVPs in the correct manner. Don't you agree, Ash? Yeah, definitely. I mean, one of the things you mentioned there about the, the shuffling of the feet or um, jackets and all that kind of stuff is, is one that comes up. I think it's kind of started off people doing a lot of um, what, what was called, um, I think, the... the uh, the, the fanciful way of putting it is, is like live listening where they'll yeah. they'll run an EVP session for like five, ten minutes and then they'll listen back to it straight away in the environment as well because then they can remember those cue sounds like people shuffling feet and things like that. Whereas if you take it home and then listen to it 24 hours later or even longer than that, then mm. you won't have a clue what they are and you'll think that a rain mat that is like moving because someone's moved their arm um, could be a voice, like, like you said. So, yeah, mm-hmm. it is... Definitely the environment you're in. It's the the way you set it up, um, how you ask the questions. Um, one other thing is probably um, getting people to to speak out. When you first do the first session, get people to say their names and stuff like that, or a brief it, or like a question or something themselves, because that seems to that seems to then give you a, a cue on who they are and how they talk and how they sound on that audible device as well. So then you can discount it yourself. And there's probably software as well that can do that for you too. Yeah, and also on that level is I know that I I do and I know other groups that I've investigated with will do exactly the same. They'll do test cases before they go into an environment where they'll say, right, say your name normally. So you say your name. My name is Carl. And then they'll basically say, can you just then whisper that? So you will say, my name is Carl or whatever. And then that way, once you get it into the software, you can see the voice pattern and you can then sort of see, right, potentially that could have been Carl whispering, but he doesn't remember saying anything. And going back to what Ashley said, I think one of the biggest things that people need to get into doing is tagging themselves while doing the EVP session. Don't feel... If you move and you make a noise and you hear yourself say to it, um, right, that's me moving, that's me rustling my coat, because Mm. that means when you play it back, like Ashley said, it could be 24 hours later, it could be a week later, it could be two weeks later. You can't remember, you, you might then forget what was happening, but if you've tagged it and you say, right, this is me moving or this is me scratching me leg or scratching my head or tagging it on, like speaking out normally and saying, right, this is me, this is this, this is this. And this helps with the review process to cut out things that potentially are false EVPs because it's down to you you moving or a coat moving or you're clearing your throat or your stomach rumbling, etc., etc. Yeah, that's what I always got taught. I always got taught never to whisper on an investigation and always, if you make a sound, to say it. Like you say, if your stomach rumbles, you just go stomach. You know, that's what I got taught back in the day. Absolutely, because if you don't and you're reviewing it, and you like most of these guys that are out there week in, week out, they could be reviewing stuff from a month ago, two months ago. And if you hear something that somebody hasn't tagged with somebody like shuffles or moves something subtly or they move their coat and whatever... Um, you're going to then think, hang on, that's... And then once you start in the voice recording software, which you then review from, you're going to start seeing patterns in something where you know there wasn't people talking because you listened to the audio, and there's a noise there. And I think that's the, that's the area where people need to take a little bit of a step back and not think everything they hear on an EVP is actually an EVP. Agreed. <laughs> I always have trouble when I'm trying to hear EVPs, hearing them. Like people will say, this is what's supposed to be there. And I'm like, really? It takes me forever to hear something. I think that comes down to everybody's different mind. Because everybody hears things 
Everybody sees things, everybody feels things in different ways. So what somebody else can hear when you play something for the first time that's not been played around with, that's not been noise cancelling, which we'll get on to, but, and you hear it, you somebody might hear it, but somebody might, hear, uh, might not hear it. So what I did when I was reviewing, I would basically write down what I thought the what it was, and then when I passed it over to somebody else to review, see what they thought the, the sounds were, like saying, right, there's an EVP, 12 minutes 60 in, what do you think that says? And you, you then collate the information, like Ashley always loves, it's day-to-day data, because if you <laughs> don't tell them what you've heard before you hear it, because you don't want to give people um, that whole, oh, hang on, he just said, oh, it could be my name, and the first thing your mind is going to do, yes, that's my name. Yeah, it does, it does work like that as well. It? It, it kind of gives you a kind of major thing. If people give you the words or a similar words, you'll start to build out of the, the sound in the background. You'll you almost build that word as being there, which is, a, which is why, yeah, you don't, don't tell anybody what, what it is you think you've heard and, they, and see what they come back with. Mm. And then that way you'll find out a lot, a lot get a lot more better results, which... I find. Which I think for sometimes, obviously, when you do live EVP bursts or whatever you want to call it, where you're on an investigation, you do, you ask two or three questions and all of a sudden you do live re- replay. All of a sudden somebody will hear something and say, right, that's that. And then they'll say that and then everybody else in the room will then suddenly think, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. I'm not hearing anything, but hang on. You've just said it could be a name, a place, a town, a date or a sentence and I'm hearing that now. So... Try and try and not oh. say what you think it is. Write it down first. And I always find as well that sometimes it's good to actually record your EVP sessions on like another form of device if you want to record it on another digital recorder or you want to record it on, an, on, a, on a camera so you can see everybody in shot talking, doing the EVP session, so you can see the bloody... If that moves around, because you timestamp them, make sure everything is timestamped to recording data and everything like that. So you can then suddenly look at it and think, hang on, he said this, but he also then put it into their mind that potentially it was this name. Yeah, that's a good point, that. It just back back (laughs) the evidence, because... you stick an EVP online and I can guarantee you'll get shot down from here until Christmas. People will think, well, where's the backup information? But if you, as I've always said, if you have evidence, you need to be able to produce that evidence that has multiple hits from multiple different devices that tie into the same thing. Hmm. So when we talk about um, various cameras and and EVP machine, you know, like voice recorder machines and stuff like that. I've heard different teams use different, like some will use just a handheld digital recorder. Some will use like an old fashioned, where you press the two buttons down and tape it onto an actual cassette tape. I don't actually know what that's called. <laughs> that's called old school. Cause it basically <laughs> the old school well, method. All you're doing is you, you're recording onto a magnetic tape. Um, you're putting a charge through it. You put, you're basically recording live. It's like what you used to do when you were a kid, when the top top ten was on on the yeah. radio, and you then you're pushing the record button and you're recording it on the side because it's producing a charge, recording what it can hear. That's the yep. one. I remember doing that. I couldn't have told you what it was called, but I remember doing that. <laughs> um, you know, which is the better method? Is there a better method, or does it matter? Does it not matter? Because you're going to have to convert that to review it through your voice recognition software anyway. That's where it comes down to. It's um, how you review it, how you discover your EVPs. Some EVPs, which I've heard, which they call Class A's, you don't have to review it because you know it's there and then you can see it. You can, excuse me, you can hear it. Hmm. Um and I think what some people do and some people fall into that trap of, they get their latest voice software, sound software, they put their EVP in and they start playing around with the background noise and start upping the down, cutting this out, cutting that out, and then they're left with something that 
sounds like a squeal and they're saying this sounds I'm the devil I'm come here to take over the world <laughs> <laughs> hashtag demons <laughs> <laughs> oh there's the demons so uh, what's your preferred method um, Carl I mean apart from like lots and lots of different tech at the same time what is your preferred method is it a handheld recorder um, what oh. I've started doing well, sorry, what I started doing um, before I, I've sort of taken a break from it is, I know it sounds really strange, but I, I started using a selfie stick. Because if you've got a handheld device, no matter how cautious you are, it's in your hand. You're going to say, like, you're moving it around or you're doing It's going to pick up the sounds close to the recorder that your hand or your jacket or whatever's making. So if you've got it on something that is locked down that isn't moving and then you're just moving it around such as a selfie stick, you're cutting out those elements. And I think that's me. It doesn't matter what recorder, whether you pay, you paid £5 on eBay or you spent £1,000 on eBay or any of the sites for a different recorder. It all depends on how you control the EVP session in my eyes. Okay. What about you, Ashley? Um, I don't think I have a favourite. I like to try, try different different ones. To be fair, I mean, I like I like um, I've used I've used to phone, uh, my my own phone, like an, an app on my phone for doing it before as well, uh, and, I, and then plugged in like the mic onto that. But sometimes you get some really bad sound effects, like actually, like Carl was just saying there um, before. But um, the one that I've kind of used over the years, which actually isn't mine, it's one of the team's one. It's always been like um a Zoom or H, H4, H4, I keep on calling it H4 or H3, I can't remember what it's called. Um, but um, those seem to be the best because they have more of a, they pick up more more sound to a wider area, if that makes sense. Um, but, oddly enough, a little, like Carl says, the little cheap ones sometimes seem to have the better hits on them. You've got to remember, every single device that you record something on records on a different level, whether you're using yeah. A Sony, whether you're using an Olympus, whether you're using the old school Panasonics, whether you're using a Zoom, whether you're using a Tascam, they all record on different level. And this is the thing that I enjoy, where you, you, you when you're trying, to, when you're in a control situation, everybody's got a different type of recorder. And they pick up something but that the person next to them doesn't pick up, but the person on the other side does pick up. And you think, well, hang on, it's a, but it has to relate to... And this is, this is probably why I've got 30 <laughs> different digital recorders, is because they all record on different levels. So if I'm on an investigation and we're doing a controlled EVP session and somebody's recording on a Tascam, I'll pull out a Tascam because it's going to record on the same level. But I would still maybe use my old Faithful, which I've had for donkey years, my Sony, because that records on another different level. Okay. So it's it's just personal preference, really, then? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what's Uh, our thoughts, then, about our voice recorders on on our mobile phones? Never use it in my eyes. Okay. Yeah, like like I said, I've I've tried an app before on like um on an iPhone before, and like I said a minute ago, it's it records, but it, I've never I've never got a hit on it, um, and it's always a bit. The sound quality is pretty can be pretty pants, and you can't use it can't stream it straight off the phone. You need you need to plug in a mic or something into it. But you've also got to remember, like most phones, whether it's an iPhone, whether it's an Android, they don't record straight away. It's a bit like when you take a photo on on a mobile phone. There's a split second with what you see on the screen when you press the button to when the actual picture is taken. It's exactly the same with the recording device on your phone. There's that split second that potentially there's going to be a lag so I personally, and this is only my own personal view, is leave your mobile phone, no matter what it is, no matter how wonderful, how expensive or how wonderful it is, leave it back in the kit room, the hub, wherever, and use stuff that is purposely for that purpose, which is recording things. Just my own personal view, and I'm not saying that is that's gospel. I'm just saying, in my eyes, I try not to use anything that's such as a mobile 
photograph app. No, I agree. I'd, I'd agree because you've got the phones. A phone's doing umpteen other different things in the background, whereas a, a recording device is just doing that. It's just yeah. recording. So yeah, I agree okay. with that. That's fair enough. I mean, that does seem to be the general consensus um, when you're looking at other groups and stuff about the mobile phone thing. In general, you know, just not to bother with taking it really because it'll interfere too much with everything that you've got. And it also on from the night. it also brings into question if somebody says, "Well, how did you record that?" And you say, "I recorded it on an iPhone Seven Plus." There's always going to be somebody going to go, "Oh, hang on, that." Yeah, that's no, that does this, that, and the other, if that makes sense. So, mm. if you're going to use a device to record stuff that you want to use as evidence, try and cut out as many possible things that people will bring up to try and poo poo your evidence, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, fo- yeah. Fo- yeah phones add more variables into the, into the mix, so yeah. same yeah. as tablets. Yeah, <laughs> and okay. always leave a, always leave a gap in my eyes. Leave a gap. Don't just kick straight into an EVP session and go. You hit the record key and then right. What's your name? Blah, and bang, 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 bang. Um, because you've obviously got to leave it a gap and then ask a question and then leave the space. And people get excited when they're doing EVPs because they're thinking, "Oh, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get that." And they'll ask multiple questions in like 30 seconds. And when you play it back, you haven't left enough space to give it a reasonable amount of uh, gap to get an EVP. Because as soon as you start picking up on EVPs that are interjoined with you ending a sentence, and I've seen it, people will say, well, hang on, that says that, but potentially that could be how everybody speaks, a way of you speaking... And the way your speech is recorded, you have that lag. Everybody has a different accent. Everybody pronounces words in a different way. Everybody has a certain language. And if you're picking up on something that happens while you are talking, not saying it is not an EVP, but you've also got to take that into into account as well. Oh my goodness, this isn't just easy, like just turning on the, oh, sorry, turning on a voice recorder and just hoping for, you know, hoping someone's going to respond to you. There's a lot more to this than um, I initially thought. So you've covered all your bases, you've got a decent recorder, you've got it on a selfie stick to take out all of that, you've done your preliminary voice recognition-y type things. When you get home and you're starting to review footage of um, electronic voice recordings, what's the best thing to use to review this? Oh, that is a question which I've been asked so many times. There are free software that you can lay out and load, whether it's Audacity, uh, whether it's this, that and the other. Um, Personally, I use Audacity. Um, and Audacity, basically, you can download a file into it. You can see the voice. You can, if you wanted to, you can play around with the sound, slow it down, take it out, cut it, splice it, whatever. Um, I don't know what Ashley uses, but I use I use there's, there's two main softwares I use: is Audacity, and I can't remember the other one. It's been such a long time since I've used it. Um, <laughs> Audacity, Audacity, I think that's the free one. Like I said, I think that's, that's yeah. a great one. If you're if you're getting started in it, Audacity is a great place to start because it does. Yeah. It's free, which means it's not going to cost you anything. Plus, also, it's quite. If I remember rightly, it's um, although it is free, it's got quite a lot in there for a free piece of software. Yeah. So you can you can get used to mess, messing around with the bits of. Well, you shouldn't mess around too much, but you can get gain an understanding of what you're what you're playing with. Um, yeah. There's a there's obviously umpteen different um, video, audio editing stuff that you can get from all different kinds of I, um, like um, computers and stuff like that. But then once you get past Audacity and anything that's free and you start spending a lot of money on it, you're obviously going to get high end stuff. But then the question is, which I always chuck in is, do you really need it? I mean, at the end of the day, if you're going to spend all that time clearing up a piece of audio, then is it are you are you are you making it valid or are you, make, are you looking looking for something that's not there? 
because it, yeah. it, it should be it should be pretty crystal clear as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So we're not and listening admit, for the the you know you know the crappy soundy ones. I mean, I've got a few that I've downloaded, um, which oh. I can play <laughs> out. Which you guys, unfortunately, in the studio aren't going to be able to hear, but the, the audience will. Can I ask? Can I ask one question when you before you play them? Do you know what they were recorded on? No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That'd be Sorry, silly. I barely f- managed to find some EVPs to download, Carl. <laughs> that, that's just that's just my geek geekness coming out, thinking, okay, maybe it's I can explain it by what's on. Pleasure. I know. See, this is where my brain goes. I just was looking for EVPs, not what they were recorded <laughs> on or how they were recorded. I didn't know any of this. I just was like, oh, that sounds like a good one. I'll download that one. <laughs> Now, the first one I'm going to play, I'm not going to tell you what it says, audience, um, the people in the chat room. If you can hear what... Now, trust me, I will give points out if you can understand what this particular EVP says because it was only because the person who posted it um, told me what it was supposed to say that I actually understood it. So I'm going to just play this one out to you. Um, Now, it's very short. It's about a minute long. And you will definitely hear the person speaking. Um, And it's one word you're looking for. (laughs) That's all I'm going (laughs) to say on this one. So bear with me, guys, in the studio. I'm just going to play this out and see if you can hear this. Ah, that was it. I'm not sure if you heard anything in that, because trust me, it took me a few listens to hear that one. Now, what that is supposed to say... Well, no, I'm going to wait until anybody comments to see if they can hear it. I heard a lot of um, rustling, a lot of muttering. I heard bird song, which wasn't the EVP. Um, there was a lot going on in there that was no- background noise. So it made it incredibly difficult, which is one of the things that Carl has pointed out. Um, the need to control your environment. Which is why I've used that one, because I wanted to demonstrate how easy it is to muddle a soundtrack and lose an EVP if you, if you capture one by not controlling your environment. That's to be, to be fair. That's that's where the soft using software does come into its own because you can you can use that to pinpoint background noises and then identify them in order to rule them out, or to identify them as not being EVPs but being an actual an actual background noise. Correct. Right, like you said, like so. So that's where that's where software like Audacity and things like that do come into their own. And although you're not highlighting an EVP, you're highlighting something that isn't an EVP, which then rules that out and out so you can move on to the next. Okay. Well, Richard has commented he heard um, breather, deep breathe or breath. That's what he thinks he heard. Oh, spooky. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds paranormal to me. Yeah. Well, it's got to be paranormal. Um, but, guys... My point of view in this particular situation or particular subject would be I kind of want somebody to actually speak really clearly. So there's no there's no arguments. The voice would be so different to anybody else on the team that you, you can't explain that rather than it being a muffled sound or where somebody's actually having to tell you what that was supposed to be. Oh, there's a big sigh. <laughs> Am I wrong in thinking that? You're not. No, you're not wrong. But the problem is, even even your crystal clear de- um, EVPs can raise equal debate, if that makes sense. Um, okay. Because I get, which goes it goes back to what um, 
what Carl mentioned before about not just controlling the environment, but being able to quantify the the EVP from other aspects as well. So having cameras that show what's going on maybe from different angles or two recordings of the same thing, that kind of stuff. Um, one singular recording, unfortunately, of just the audio sometimes just isn't enough. <laughs> it's a bit it's a bit like somebody saying, Here's a photo. Yep. There you go. That's a that's a ghost. Yeah. Well, potentially it could be a ghost, but potentially it could be a number of other factors. It could be light coming in from that room or somebody moving behind the camera or somebody because all these all these devices have like a screen that produces a glow. So potentially yeah. if you're there and you're recording it and you've got the recording on different angles and you and then you think hang on he moved just a little bit potentially that's at that split second that could potentially be what he heard or what we hear you can then say right that okay that's fair enough but if you've got multiple angles and a recorder or multiple recorders and they pick up on the same thing and you think well nobody moved nobody did this nobody did that that's more what i would say is what you're looking for because you're trying to rule out every possible other aspect of it if that makes mm. sense yeah i understand exactly I think, what you're saying ashley i think that, yeah i mean i, I was, I was just about to, I was going off on a tangent then usually no, i usually do um I mean, we, we've spoken a lot already so far about um, what I call the the standard modern day EVP approach and stuff like that. But there is there is a lot of there is there is a lot of work that was done on EVPs that goes back all the way back to like the 1960s and then past that. Um, I mean, obviously, it was, I mean, some of it started. I mean, one of the big names and it was Ra- um, Raoul Dave, Constantine Raoul Dave, um, and then also past even that, before that, actually, and even, well, even before that, oh, Thomas, Thomas Edison, Edison. Yeah, the ghost, the he, phone, he, what, phone calls. Of one there. of his things was he wanted to record communication with the dead. That's where. He, he had this idea, being at what he learned, what he was, he wanted to learn that. And that, and, and, and that oddly enough, that also leads into the Skulls experiment, because that's that's also was, was assumed to be the um, tran, uh, trans-dimensional communication device that came through in the Skull experiments, was supposed to be Thomas yeah. Edison's design for the telephone to the dead, um, yeah. which was also something that they think that, um, I think, Nikolai Tesla was interested in. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think someone who's more recently. Um, well, you got George. Saw... You got George and Jeanette Meeks in the sixties. Yes, you yes. Constantine. Oh. Constantine Radays. Never can I pronounce the person's name. Constantine Rudy's Radays. Rad Rad and um, yeah. Frederick. Frederick Jürgensen. Jürgensen. <laughs> you. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> well, it's testing, um, and then. Who's that other guy? And then one of the ones that I found really interesting, which is um, I saw in um, uh, uh, like a documentary thing called The Afterlife Investigations, which was on the Skull Experiment, was a guy called Marcello Bacchi. Mm-hmm. And he used he used a valve radio yeah. to communicate with the dead. And he had voices coming through. So this is like live EVP, if you like. Yeah. 19, that, I think that was 1947, 48, 49, something around that period, wasn't it? Uh, not sure about the date, but I'll take it word for it. <laughs> But yeah, he's he was he's he's in, he's got, he's got some interesting things. I think he might be a bit more close. Didn't time. they take the transformers or something out of that as well? Yeah, they, yeah, they played around with it so much. I think I'm pretty sure that they secured it off as well. So it was like it didn't at one it point it didn't even have a power. It could have worked, but it did. But it did <laughs> somehow, was, didn't it? Yeah, but he, but he's, yeah I just remember, I basing... remember reading about that. His basing of his philosophy of what he wanted to do was all based around what the the things that Thomas Edison wanted to do and how he That's thought right. it was easy to communicate with the dead. When, uh, with Marcelo, he, he had this thing that Thomas Edison wanted to do, which sadly Thomas Edison died before he could actually put it into place. 20, 30 years later, I'm not particularly 100% sure on the dates between Thomas Edison dying and Marcelo, but... He picked up on this and then ran with it to produce his sort of data, his findings. In I think I think it was 48, 47, 48, 49. I think he's more up to date than that. I've got a funny feeling he's... See, I thought I remember uh, seeing that in the Skull Experiment documentary. Yeah, that is that is on the Skull Experiment. Uh, no, he's yeah, he's 
there is another there is another guy. I know I think I know who, who you're thinking of, Carl. So I've got a lot of time oh, to stop on the tangent. Yeah, the, Mar- yeah. Marcello Marcello Bacchi is more up to date and he was doing things with using old old um uh, valve radio systems and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but there there was other people prior to prior to Raul Dave and all that lot who had, who had, I call him Raul Dave. That's got to be pronounced wrong. So if there's anyone out there who's who's <laughs> He's going, it's not, it's not pronounced like that. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Radiv. Radiv. <laughs> Look, I can't um, say yeah, anything. You should hear me, my pronunciations on a Friday sometimes. <laughs> it, pro- it, it probably sounds so amazing when somebody pronounces it in the right type of dialect and the right voice. It's amazing. Yeah, that's right, right. So, yeah, it's, more, it's a more modern time. He's, up, he's more up to date. Like, um, oh, okay. The last hit I've got him is, like, two, is 2000 and something, 2013. So... Yeah, he's he's been doing stuff to do with valve radios and li- like almost like live communication with um, right. River Dead. Um, but there was stuff that was po- post um, post prior to get the words right, um, uh, Raul Dave and all that lot before they all started because it was I think it was isn't it was it Raul Dave that put it into was first used the term EVP? Yeah, possible. Yes, yeah, and, y- and Jurgensen in their book. Yeah, that's it. So I've got them to blame. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> you, there you go. See, you, there's you, one of my things. You think back in those days, in what, 59, well, we're in it, whatever year we're on, whether it was 49, whether it was 59, 69, you think what they, the, the devices that they were using, which was the valves and the recorders or the magnetic tape on a reel to reel, etc., and then what we're using nowadays, there's a big leap. From what they've done, what they're doing to what we're what we're doing in 2017 with the type yeah. of technology, so type of technology. So, so yeah, it says in Rudolph Dave, he done he, and I am reading this off of off of the internet, so it might not be a hundred percent correctly. I've just kind of quick Google. <laughs> See that small print. Um, apparently, <laughs> he, he recorded recorded over a hundred thousand audio tapes. Under what he called strict laboratory conditions, um, um, over 400 people were involved in his research, um, and all apparently heard the voices uh, from 1968. So back in the day, still doing that sort. Of, but that's under strict laboratory sort of like conditions as well. So not in not in haunted houses. To throw it out there. <laughs> yeah, not not sitting in a dank cellar at four o'clock in the morning on a Friday night when a nightclub's kicking out. True. No, there was a, a warm laboratory with like heating and a coffee machine yeah. down the hallway. Yeah. So he <laughs> I, I know we're so right. successful, but if he was so successful with this form of method of communication, why hasn't that been used on more regularly and tested by more people? I think it comes down to how we did it. You can't take laboratory. You can, but it will mean that you've got to be completely and utterly whatever to your locations you go to. You can't sometimes take laboratory conditions into uh, a haunted fort or where you've got outside things or into the woods or into a house that's wooden when it creaks it, when it gets cold it creaks you can't you can't you can't take that into that because the what he's doing he's basically doing a a test in an environment cut out every other possible explanation. Okay. Yeah, so he's looking looking at what he's written and what he's finding were he's taking laboratory conditions as is a cleansed room or a clean room. So nothing yeah. in there can produce any sound out of what he's picking up or with somebody asking the questions, that's what they've got. You can't take that from there into an investigation unless you can 100% cl- completely closed down a room or a location. And sadly, I don't think there's many people out there that have pockets deep enough to do that. <laughs> no. The, no, this is very true. <laughs> Money does seem to always become the issue. So what's the point, right? If we, we're going out um, most weekends, you've got all oh, every weekend, there are teams and teams going out using voice recorders and other methods of recording um, voices. What's the point? If you can account for everything, if you can, you know, get class A EVPs, what does this prove to us? Does it prove anything? Um, 
Uh, I I think um I th- I think it's still important. I mean, it's like um I it's like it's like the tv shows and stuff like that. i think this approach is always good because it gets people interested and understanding and it's yep. and then it then gets people that that spark goes with some people and then all of a sudden they want to know more they want to understand more they want to try different things and then often that's where you get your next step come from your next jump in 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 the process come from because someone's gone in seen seen something seen how it's been done and then gone do you know what why don't you just do it this way and do it or try this and it's like and nobody's thought of it because they're not as bright and new, not as bright and new to that sort of approach as those those people are, and you, just, you or get they're that coming sometimes. in from a different point of view, different eyes, yes, different completely, theory, which exactly. I think is great. This is what this feels brilliant about. Doesn't matter whether you've been doing it forty years, fifty years, sixty years. Somebody that could walk in there that has a different background to you can suddenly go, "Well, hang on, if we do something this way, why why are we not going to be able to do something?" And that's what I find fascinating about the field is it doesn't matter how long you've been doing it because as, as me, me, Kerry and Ashley have done on previous <laughs> other shows we don't believe in experts we believe nice. with people that have knowledge <laughs> that can advise, can help or can give their point of views whatever and you, whatever you do with that information is what you do with that information but why can't somebody that has been, been in the industry five minutes who comes from, say, a sound recording background, think, well, hang on, if you do it this way, or you do it this way with this bit of equipment, you could possibly do, you could possibly get these sort of findings. Yeah, that's exactly it. And I think that's what the, I think that's what this industry is great about. It, it, no matter what, how you got into it, whether it's most haunted, whether it's ghost adventures, whether you are just interested in spooky stuff or you've been brought up on it. How you got interested, it doesn't matter what. It's what you can bring to the field to help the field progress. That's the biggest thing. Agreed okay. totally on that. Okay. So what's the theory um, about electronic voice communication? Bearing in mind, Spirit haven't got voice boxes. They don't have voice boxes, but there's a. Do you have to have a voice box to record something? A do wind you have through to a have tree. Have a voice box to make a sound, though. Not necessarily. Wind through a tree doesn't have a voice box. But we don't Still want to catch our winds in the tree. Yeah, but you're 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 just saying a, a sound that doesn't have a voice box can't be recorded. And I'm giving you somewhere where. A oh, I sound you're saying, or... sorry, yes, sorry, carry on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking just people here. You know? No, 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 because no, every, everything that you record is is happening there and then, whether you're standing in a force 10 hurricane and recording that, it's going to produce a noise. It doesn't have a voice box, but you're still yes. able to record it. Okay, that's so a fair point. The, the level is how far down do you go, whether what you're recording is recording on the certain levels of audio sound that is the auditory spectrum. So, what, for instance, a dog whistle, humans can't hear, but dogs can hear. That would still yes. get recorded on certain, um, certain recorders because they're picking up on that. So, what... So, sorry, just to clarify for my own personal interest, really... So if you had a dog whistle and you blew it and you was recording on like a digital, would you hear the? Would you then hear the dog whistle? I would say yes, depending on the recording you had. Even though you didn't hear it with your actual ears. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ashley, do you agree? Yeah, uh, back back in the day, we also used used to use a device when we was go something called a Canem device, which was supposed to. Uh, um, elevate the frequency that you was listening at, so you could hear it almost like a like a dog could, and pick up other. Yeah. Vo- do you remember? Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah, um, yeah. So if you if you blew a dog whistle or made a, a a noise at that frequency and you recorded it, it would still record that because obviously, the, like you said earlier, Carl, the recording devices record at different frequencies, and obviously because they're they're digital or, or not digital, they might not be. They might be um uh analog. That's the one. Um, they obviously record at different different um, frequencies than we hear at as well. So yeah, so it's more than possible that it could record it. Well, you well, I never. <laughs> well, I never is all I can say to that one. <laughs> now, I'm just gonna know. I learn something new every week on this show. 
Um, I'm going to play another EVP. Now, this is actually one of Ashley's EVPs. He's kindly given me permission to play this out to you. This, in my view, you can't argue <coughs> what's said. Okay. Ashley, before it gets played, because obviously I can't hear it. Yeah. What device was it recorded on? <laughs> ah, that's interesting, actually, because this one was actually recorded on a camcorder. If I think it's the right one, is it the right? Is that the right one? Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. It's a video yeah, footage yeah. that I've I've actually had to convert to an MP3. Right. Oh, okay. Right, yeah. no, that's, yeah. okay. That's that opens up another can of worms, but we'll go through that. All yep. right. Let me play it. I'll sh- I'll play it to you later, Carl, so you know which we're what yeah, cool. we're talking about because this is clear as a bell. This one. It's only nine seconds, guys. So listen up. Did you hear that, everybody? I love it. it sounds like Derek Okora to me. <laughs> but you've just given them... <laughs> no, 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 I know, but it just sounds like that. But no, it does, it does, it does. There was nobody with that accent on your investigation. It's on camera, so you can see yep. everybody that was on the part that part of the investigation, can't you? You can... You can try to it. I think at the point that that was recorded, though, I think the camera was pointing up a staircase. So right. at that point, at that point, everybody's behind the camera, which is so annoying and typical. Um, but yeah, we've previous to that, people have been on the who was in that little group who were in front of the camera, and I think um, you hear someone say about it, what the conversation that occurs is completely out of context to what's said, uh, and no one has that accent though, and no one. And because of what's said, no one laughs or chuckles afterwards either, which is mm-hmm. very weird. Um, no. So it's complete, completely out of place, which is I why... I think we've that's got... something that you need to also take into, uh, into consideration is when you're listening to EVPs and when you're trying to pick up on EVPs, if it's relating to what your conversation is, i.e. you're asking something and you get a direct response, i.e where are we, and it says, I'm in Buckingham Palace in the throne room, or whatever you want to say, and you get that response back, there is that that sort of uh, correlation that you need. But if Mm. it's sort of, say, a random, where are you, I'm riding a unicycle down the mall, (laughs) sort of correlation, but you can live with it. But if it says... I'm picking through wherever, whatever. Is that, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to explain that in a really weird way of saying it, explaining it to me, to be honest. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. Sometimes, sometimes you can get a response that, re- that refers directly to the conversation you're having, having as yeah. in having a conversation with the spirit. Um, so if you're asking questions, you, might got, you may get answers that are associated with those questions that you're asking. Yeah, that's right. Um, and um, but often, uh, like that, the situation with this particular one is there was no conversation like that. There was just this response that fitted. Well, it didn't fit anywhere, to be fair. So, you, but you can get that as well. And sometimes the things that are out of place are equally interesting as the things that are in place. Yeah. Totally. Is that, is that, is that what, yeah. yeah. That makes sense, Kerry. Yeah. No, no, that makes <laughs> total sense to me because it is right. You know, you're all walking through the location, and what is said doesn't relate to anything. And there was no response from the team. So, no. and like you said, what was said is somebody would have laughed. Yes, yes, I, Ooh, I would have laughed. That, that sounds very interesting. <laughs> I will send you. I will send it to you, Carl. Don't you worry. You'll yep. get a copy of that. Um, the two that I've played, I'm not going to worry of any more because the other two, quite frankly, were you needed somebody with, with a great big red sign around it telling you what was said because oh the famous red circle that the paranormal a bit like the red circle thing it's a bit like (laughs) when you watch the tv show and they 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 play the evps but they put underneath straight away what you're supposed to be hearing so your ears automatically start hearing what's said because you read it yep yep and this is the main problem when you're listening or watching tv programs that are playing out evps they always put what they think they heard or what they think it says so your ears mm. will automatically hear that pattern because it's already been point that pattern has already been pointed out to you. Correct. That's right. Yeah, that's right. This is like audio pareidolia. We talk about this quite often uh, with your eyes, your visual uh, pareidolia. 
but your ears do it too. They do it song lyrics. It's so common. Hmm. It's that famous thing you everybody sees on social media. That famous thing where you've got uh, mixed up letters of words, and they say only one percent of the uh, the public can read this, but your mind will put in letters to make words. Yeah. So it will say if you can read this, blah 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 blah. No, that is just a load of jumbled up words put in a certain way that your mind will then go, well, I can read that. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't mean you're psychic, doesn't mean you're this, that and the other. It just means that your mind is working on a, a level that the the test is is working on. Yeah, and your ears do the same thing. So you do have to be aware of that too because that's part of how the brain works, isn't it? The brain mm-hmm. will actually make patterns in sound and visual to fit mm, that's funny. that's right one, one of the most common ones it does is it, it listens through its own its own name so if you it will listen it will listen out in sound for your own for your own name so you're alert for, for things like that and other other things that are associated to you so it will, it will try you'll try and pick up so so while sounds are going on you'll listen to your own name which is why a lot of people probably turn around and go that said my name <laughs> i think the only difference is when the first name I can understand, that. and yeah, it, that. but when you when you get an EVP that gives both first and second name, yeah, I, out of context naming, yeah. So yeah, yeah if it's, yeah. if it's sometimes sometimes it can be a little bit not yeah. fit that thing. But yeah, if you hear if you hear random randomly hear your name, that's that can usually be. Okay. But you need again again that's where you have to look at look at the piece of audio. Test it with other people, and then and then get their opinion as well. Because all, all, the, all these things, like like pictures and stuff like that, it, it takes opinion of others as well. I think and and analysing it a little bit before you can go. Oh yeah, that's definitely that. Yeah, totally, totally agree. Okay, now there is another theory um, that we've spoken about before. Now I think both of us have all three of us, sorry, have spoken yep. about before now, which is an imprinting of thought onto a digital form of recording. Now, this is something that Brian J. Cano looks at quite heavily in his experimentations, isn't it? Yep. Ashley, I think you're better to um, take the lead on this because, obviously, I've, I've experienced that I've been there, but uh, yeah, it's I... probably the most recent experiment of, of it. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't work all the time. Experiment, but I mean, it, I I experienced it. Um, I go, was it Fort Horsted? It was, wasn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. um, Fort Horsted. Brian Kenna was doing D Day tours for Sage uh, Paranormal, um, and he done with the whole group. He done what he calls the psychic projection experiment, um, and to do that, basically, the whole group sat in the room and for a minute you record on a, on a single device. Uh, actually, we had two, I think, or actually we had all the devices around the table running at that point. So all, all of us, and but we said that we're going to focus our thought onto Brian's um, device, which was at the far end of the table from me, and we're just going to project psychically, uh, mentally, one word onto that device. Now, on that particular occasion, um, a group of you guys, because you've been together all day and moving around a place, have been talking quite heavily about Lord of the Rings, if I remember rightly. Mm-hmm. Gollum. Yeah, and I, Gollum. yeah, that's. That's it, and the, and the word the word on that particular occasion was Gollum because it, and because it had an emotional tie, I think it becomes stronger and useful in in this in this particular experiment. Um, and basically, we all thought of that word, projected it over this minute. We thought about it and projected it onto Brian's Brian's device. Um, and sure enough, when he played it back, if I remember rightly, and my hopefully my memory's right, about fifty seconds in, there was Gollum on 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 the device. And if I remember rightly as well. Um, MJ had her device just past his, like literally on the table next to his, in the same kind of area. Mm-hmm. And I think she, I think she caught it as well, didn't she? Around the well, same I time. There was, I, I believe out of all the devices, I think there was three out of numerous that and they're all, up on something that could potentially say Gollum. And then, yeah, most of them are in that at that area, that that loca- loca- that location where yeah. Brian's was. So. Um, so this, this theory is like, so we can use thought to project information onto a digital recording device because they were digital. Um, and in that short burst, then you can get a, res- a response or you can get that information come up on a, on a digital audio recording. Um, it doesn't, it really doesn't work all the time because I've done it a few times. I think 
uh, this year at Sage Sage Paracon. Um, I did we done it again with Brian, um, and it didn't work unfortunately in our group. Um, I don't know if it worked with any of the other groups. But um, I think that's, I think that's quite good because if it worked every single time, people would just go, "Yeah, that's fine." Exactly, and the, this this time when we done it, there was few of there was few of us few there was less of us. I gave didn't word. Uh, there was less of us in the group at that particular point in time. The word we picked, we picked on the fly there and then, and it didn't have as much in my mind. It didn't have as much of an emotional. Um, uh, I say emotional. I mean, you know, like a prominent bond to the people that were involved. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas a big chunk of the people on that, when it worked, had a had a link to that Lord of the Rings conversations and joking around about it and. And the word Gollum and all that kind of stuff was quite prominent for them for the whole of that day, not just mm. not for just a short few seconds before they decided to use it. So mm. I, I think that that can be important too, and yeah. then and that that helped get get to a, a positive result. But then the problem with that <coughs> is it creates a whole new debate around the whole aspect of EVPs in my mind. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And this is this is the thing that we've discussed this in the past is whatever we've discussed in the last 45 minutes of the show potentially could be a load of absolute hogwash yeah and it's, and it's people <laughs> that are holding the recorders that are imprinting what they want to hear onto the recording and yep. that i think should be opened up to the chat room to see what they think because me and ashley have gone over and over and <laughs> over this subject so many times and um, we can't come to up to I, I think it's brilliant if we can if we can use our mind power to do that kind of thing then i think it's brilliant because it means star wars is going to be real isn't it <laughs> oh my goodness we're all jazzed. um now, didn't brian <laughs> didn't not, brian not all of us carry <laughs> a pardon i said not all of us are jedis <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> mm. anyway didn't he also do um a Almost like a worldwide experiment on this front as well. Yeah, he started last year, um, where basically it was it was called the world's biggest ghost hunt, um, and everybody that was investigating there was several different teams. Majority of them in the states. I think myself and Ashley were on one in the UK together. Yes, we were yeah. Um, at a, a location that neither of us had been to. Um, so we didn't know what was going on. We went in completely and utterly blind. That's right. And yeah. um, basically what happened was at certain times of the night, we had to go live to do experiments that at every moment of that, there was like 200, not, I think it was over 200 groups that were doing this, did exactly the same thing at exactly the same time. So they were using the same equipment. They were asking the same questions. They were do- basically doing everything exactly the same at that particular moment. And it's actually probably better to explain it, but it's opening the what is how does Brian explain it about the the, the portal, bridge the bridge the, br- the bridge the bridge they the bridge bridge experiment I think he calls it yeah it's um and basically it's um it's everyone doing the same thing at the same time. So there's a higher a higher focus on I suppose on what some would call like the psychic plane or something mm. um, on that on that kind of level, so that we're all trying to connect in to do the same thing on and and have that same information come across. I mean, he he done experience with um, um, ITC if I remember rightly, um, just some standard digital recording bits and pieces as well. But we also these well we on our one I don't know if everyone done it, but we when we done it we done it over FaceTime as well, didn't we? Mm-hmm. So so is that all that element of it? So you're you are you're not just doing it at the same time you feel connected and a part of a bigger group as well all around the world mm-hmm. so there's all there's a ton of like this linkage um on our level and on different on various different levels that brings it all together which is i think i think it's a fantastic and a brilliant idea and if we can get the data 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 <laughs> out of it <laughs> which which i know brian is working hard with um with the guys that have put it together um i can't remember their names now um I know he works hard with them guys to try and get it out. I think they even had yeah. a guy who was looking at the statistics behind it and all that kind of stuff. So it's as it builds over the years, it'll be. I mean, look, I didn't get, I was unable to do it this year, unfortunately, but um, it, um, it, I think it needs to be done more and the experiment's honed a little bit and then we'll be, we'll be well away with this, this thing. So I this think it's I think almost it's like great. an experimentation moving forward, trying to move the field forward. This is like a new, quite a yes. new thing. Well, to be truthfully honest, I personally think it's like something that. 
I know people will probably shout me down from the rooftops to say this, but it's it's kind of like what Ghost Adventure is trying to do with the three trying with the triangle experiment, where they had three live locations being recorded at the same time, which was I think Winchester Mystery House, Bobby Mackey's, and another location, and they were trying to basically just get in there obviously less dramatic than what we what we were trying to do but it's the same sort of principle it's trying to get people doing exactly the same thing at exactly the same time to see whether they can produce whether it's alive which i think potentially could be good because you can then basically have that backup information but it's i think that's that's an interesting way of going down the road for and trying to see what happens yeah well, my lovelies, on that note, being as that is something that is going to try and push the field forward, we've actually run out of time. We're actually come to the end of tonight's show. So thank you so much for joining me and explaining a little bit more about EVPs to me. That's all right. <laughs> Not a problem. Now, tomorrow night, don't forget to join us for the Haunted History Show. Tomorrow's show is all about the Oman House and the Manson murders. Um, that's something that I'm, I'm really interested in, so... You know, listen in tomorrow. Don't forget, we have shows going out at 9 pm every single night of the week, and I do mean every single night of the week <laughs> this week because Kerry Ann is on Saturday night as well, so there is no excuses. <clears throat> and if you do miss any of the shows, you can listen to them back. We are on YouTube and they are also on the Spreaker app um, as podcasts. Um, so please tell all your friends about them and come and listen to them. That's all I've got to say, really. And on that note, I'm going to kick off Paul's massive shoes and uh, <laughs> put my lovely dainty little shoes back on. And I hope you enjoyed the show. And thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.